Big Commerce recently released their long awaited multi storefront. In this video, we're going to discuss what it is, why it's important functionality to have, and then we're going to break down the functionality and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with Big Commerce multi storefront. If you're new around these parts, my name is TJ Gamble and I'm the founder and CEO of Jamerson, where we've been helping accelerate businesses' e commerce growth for over 20 years and we're elite big commerce partners. So let's get into it. Let's start by defining what multi storefront is. With multi storefront, you can log into a single admin panel and manage multiple e commerce websites. This functionality allows you to have a common data set of things like products and customers and share them across multiple e commerce sites. You can then, if you desire, custom tailor things like theme, pricing, and categorization for each of those storefronts. And this opens up a whole new world of possibilities. For merchants like yourself, this is important because it can make having multiple stores cheaper and easier to manage. For example, you can have one admin to manage both B2C and B2B storefronts selling the same products to completely different customer bases. Here are some use cases where I see this as perfect for. If you have a product data set that you need to manage across multiple e-commerce sites, then this is absolutely for you. For example, the B2C and B2B example I just mentioned, or maybe you have multiple retail sites that all share part of the same product catalog. Another great use case for this are micro sites. If you want to create a small marketing site to hype a particular sale, product launch, or activation, it's really easy to throw that together and pull the right products in and tailor that entire user experience for that particular event. You can also use this to sell into different regions. Perhaps you're in the US and you want to sell to Canadians, eh? You can create a storefront for them. Set the default pricing to Canadian dollars or moose pelts or however they pay for things in Canada these days. And now you're better catering to that market. Let's break down my views on Big Commerce's multi storefront functionality. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, where I'll fill you in on some limitations that could be an issue for you. This is, as always, my opinion on this particular topic, but these are always meant as a conversation. So please let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. Of course, subscribe if big commerce topics interest you. And there's a link in the description to jamerson.com to contact me if you have more detailed questions or need help. So let's get into the good and the bad with big commerce multi storefront. I always like to start with the good. They got most of the basics right and allowed quite a bit of variance from storefront to storefront. You can easily share products, change the default currency, set a unique theme, set unique price lists, and mix B2B and B2C across various storefronts. Your categories can be completely unique and you can even change product filters depending on your needs for each store. You can also use global settings that apply across multiple storefronts or drill down and set them uniquely for each one. You can limit access to categories or entire storefronts based on customer groups. So theoretically, you could do a microsite for just your VIP customers with very little effort. What Big Commerce has done here gives you the ability to craft really unique experiences on each site and with very little effort, you could do some fun and creative things. I also like how they've integrated this into their channel manager. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here. And this was just a smart way to work this into the admin of the site and keep it simple. Just like if you were going to sell on Amazon or some social platform, your various storefronts are now just set up as channels and can be managed in much the same way. If you're accustomed to multiple channels on big commerce, then you already know how to manage a multi storefront environment. Overall, it's a really easy process to manage and they've integrated it extremely well. So let's talk about the bad and the ugly. There's a little bit to discuss here, mostly around the limitations. In fairness, this functionality is brand spanking new. And anytime you add channels like this, it adds overhead to the site. And I assure you, they had to do some extensive re-architecting to make this work. I know these limitations are to be safe while rolling out this new functionality until it's more battle tested. I know they'll increase over time. So I'll put a link in the description for you to check out the latest limitations. If you're watching this way into the future, here are the limitations of note as of this functionality's release. 
We'll start with the smaller ones and work our way to the bigger issues. You can only have five traditionally themed sites using stencil or 15 headless front ends. And that's only going to affect a small number of merchants. If this is a problem for you, just make sure you have a good reason for needing more because for most normal use cases, five sites on one data set is a lot. This is also only available on enterprise plans, but it doesn't take much to warrant being on a big commerce enterprise plan. If you're doing less than the enterprise threshold, which is like $400,000, and you're trying to build complex multi-store environments, then you're probably overcomplicating things. Just stick to the basics, get one site right, worry about this later as you grow. The next issue is that not all third-party apps are multi-storefront capable. And that's improving every week, but it takes time, so research the apps that you can't live without. So let's get into the bigger potential issues. And because of the overhead added in a multi-storefront environment, the current limitations are more restrictive than a single storefront environment. They've capped it at 10,000 products. If you have high SKU counts, this isn't going to work for you right now. They've also limited variants to 70, which could be an issue if you have complicated products. Categories have been limited to 100, which is probably for the best with a category that small, and each category can only have a thousand products at the most. They've also limited the volume to a thousand orders per day. Now I've confirmed with Big Commerce that these limitations are not hard caps on what's possible, but if you need to exceed them, you'll have to talk to Big Commerce to make sure your site is a good fit for this functionality. If you need to go beyond these, just contact me using the link below and I'll introduce you to the right folks. The next issue is that they have not yet been able to localize checkout settings for each storefront. And that means you can't set different payment methods, tax or shipping settings for each channel. They also don't have a native way to localize product information to various languages for individual storefronts. These localizations are doable with some customizations, but it's still a workaround that can complicate your project, so they're worth mentioning. In fairness, they are working on multi-language capabilities and flexibility and checkout on multi-storefront, but I can't give you a timeline on their expected release. Until then, they're just limitations of note. So let's recap and I'll give you my thoughts. It's slick and smart how they integrated this using their existing channel setup. It's really simple to manage and pretty flexible in what you can do. I'm excited to see some of the creative use cases that folks come up with for it, but I'm really excited about the mix of B2B and B2C in the same admin. That alone will be of interest to a lot of our clients. Now I know they're working on them and this is just the first release but the limitations as they exist are a little harsh. You're building enterprise functionality that opens up a world of possibilities for businesses that have complexity and are pushing boundaries. The limits are gonna prohibit a lot of those businesses that could have benefited from these features from being able to use it, at least until they get around to relaxing those limits. And one of the biggest, most obvious use cases for multi-storefront is to be able to sell across borders. Having the ability to use different languages and checkout settings and really catering the entire experience to each of those environments is powerful. Not having that is a big miss. And I understand why, I get it. This is complicated and they wanna get it out and into the market for use cases that don't need this particular subset of functionality. But man, is this gonna be a game changer for those that need it once it's released. And don't misunderstand me. For now, you can support this use case with some customization, but I do look forward to the day that it's just out of the box functionality and accessible to merchants of all budgets. And that's what you need to know about Big Commerce's multi-store front. Don't forget to subscribe if you're into big commerce topics because that's all we talk about on this particular channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and go to the link in the description if you have questions or wanna discuss it further. Here are a couple of other videos that YouTube thinks you would like in case you wanna keep watching.